and Seminole Native Indians. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. Desolate it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate because no one takes it to heart. The plunderers have come on all the desolate heights in the wilderness for the swarm of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 11. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins. This is speaking of the people of Jerusalem. As I said before, starting from the time of Moses, we upset the Lord. So since we upset the Lord, he brought us low. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a den of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. So from a long period of time, Nobody was claiming their own heritage as being an Israelite, of being from Jerusalem or Yerushalayim, of being from Yasharala, of being from Yahweh. Nobody was claiming that for a long time. Because our Lord stripped our heritage from us. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And you, even yourself, shall let go of your heritage which I gave you, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So when our Lord said in verse 11, I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a den of jackals, I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. He was saying that he was going to strip our heritage and our identity from us. And verse 12 explains why, along with verse 13. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken? That he may declare it. Why does the land perish? and burn up like a wilderness so that no one can pass through. So why are the Lord's people being destroyed and, and going through affliction and don't even know why? And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and I'm not obeying my voice. not obey my voice, nor walk according to it. So as it read, our Lord brought us to a low place in our lives because we didn't obey his voice. We didn't obey his laws. We didn't obey his commands. Jeremiah chapter three and verse 12. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord your power and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you one from a family and I will take you one from a city and two from a family and I will bring you to Zion. 
and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with understanding, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So our Lord has set up those shepherds according to his own heart in order to feed the sheep of the flock with knowledge and understanding. chapter 14 and verse 1. O Israel, return to the Lord your power, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. So we stumbled because we weren't following the law, statutes, and commandments. So now being returned to the Lord, that should be one of the first things that you meditate on. How do I have to carry myself, my own body, in order to please the Lord? How do I follow the rules so that I can please the Heavenly Father? Well, it starts with the law, statutes, and commandments. O oh, Israel, return to your power, Yahweh, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him. Say to him. Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Asking the Lord for forgiveness, studying the scripture, and understanding what our Lord had in mind for us before time. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. I will return. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face earnestly. Then they will seek my face in their affliction. They will earnestly seek me. And chapter 6, verse 1. And it reads a call to repentance. Come and let us return to Yahweh. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. So in order to please the Lord, you have to pursue knowledge and, 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 and things in order to do so. You can't just say that you're going to please the Lord by your own understanding and by your own deeds. You have to seek to do things that please the Lord. And what does our Lord tell us? to John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And this is red letter, so it's our Lord, Yahweh. If you love me, keep my commandments. I repeat, if you love me, keep my commandments. I repeat, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if our Lord died for our sins, if our Lord died for our sins, and he's telling the Israelites, if you love me, keep my commandments. That sounds like they tried to uh, deceive us. Our Lord didn't say, if you love me, do what you want to do. Our, said, if you, our Lord said, if you love him, keep his commandments. 
If you love me, keep my commandments. First John chapter 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh. When we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh that we that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not love. So as our Lord tells us. His commandments are not burdensome. Starting with the dietary law. Not eating pork or any unclean foods. Not worshiping idols. Not committing adultery. Having a sense of morals. Not doing things that you gotta question if what you did was right or wrong. Not doing things that make you feel dirty afterwards. People wonder why they got high blood pressure. People wonder why they got health issues. It's because they're eating garbage, mainly pork. And that's the main thing that they put in so-called soul food because they know that that destroys your soul. the book of Romans chapter 2 Romans chapter 2 and I'll start in verse 1 therefore you are inexcusable O man how are you doing? I'm alright you heard about the 12 tribes of Israel so our people being the so called Negroes, Latinos and Seminole Native Indians were given the law, statutes and commandments but because during the time of Moses, when people upset the Lord, they wanted to play and have fun. They wanted to go back to Egypt and that upset the Lord because he was bringing them out of Egypt to bring them into his mercy so that he could, so that he could show his mercy on them. But because the people were rebellious, they didn't fully really understand, they rebelled and went their own way. Well, in the times that we're in now, our Lord has woke up as prophets of old. Our Lord tells us that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So when the Bible speaks of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, and all these great men, they're back in today's day and time. And our Lord has sent us out to call his people back, the 12 tribes of Israel, because they greatly deceived us. They caused us to stumble against the law. And they caused us to offend the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father tells us that the nation of Israel is his firstborn. So you heard about people saying that the Lord died for our sins? Okay. This is the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 23. From this man's seed, now this is speaking of King David. King David was a man after the Lord's own heart. For from this, from this man's seed, according to the promise, Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father. So you heard people talk about Yahweh and Jehovah, uh, 
Jehovah and, and all these different names talking about the Lord. The Heavenly Father's real name is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Same way in today's day and time when a man has a firstborn son, he gives him his name, he names him a junior. That's that's in turn is what the Heavenly Father did with our Lord and Savior. His name is not Jesus. That was set up by the Roman Catholic churches. So the same people that put us in slavery, I don't know if you've seen these posters, but the same people that put us in slavery, which is the so-called white man, it wasn't just the so-called Negroes that went into slavery. It was the Haitians, the Jamaicans, the Guatemalians, the Panamanians, the Colombians, the Uruguayans, the Mexicans, uh, who else? The Native Americans, the Seminole Indians, the Cubans, the Puerto Ricans. That's all the family of the Heavenly Father. They go back to the 12 tribes of Israel. But they enslaved all of us here in America. They just did it in two different segments. So you had the Native Americans and the so-called Mexicans and the related the related tribes, the Guatemalans, Panamanians, uh, Colombians. They came to America first. They came to America around 700 BC. They fled from the land of Israel because there were there were wicked kings that were invading all of them, and they kept harassing them and they destroyed Israel. And from, and from Jerusalem and Israel, the land, that's where the so-called Mexicans and the so-called Native Indians fled to the Americas. But the so-called Negroes and the so-called Haitians, they stayed in that land because the Lord wanted to, uh, that's how the Lord had it in play. And that's where the Native Indians and the so-called Mexicans were in the Americas already. Well then fast forward to around 1492, you have Christopher Cologne or Christopher Columbus, who they just celebrated a day for him. You had him come from Spain over into the Americas, and he stumbled upon Hispaniola, which is the so-called Haitians and the so-called Dominicans. And once he stumbled upon them, he gave a God uh, Chilaki. Our people gave him God. We gave him cotton. Uh, they were coming to him with like with like bars of cotton and gold and resources because they were welcoming the guests. And in turn, uh, Christopher Colon sent back to Spain and said, these people are, they're, they're simple-minded, they're innocent. All we need is 50 men and we can conquer all of them. And from that time period, from 1492, Christopher Colon became, became, be, be, began to slaughter hundreds of thousands of, of Native Indians, of, of, of Cubans, of Puerto Ricans, uh, of, of, of so-called Mexicans, Guatemalans. All right. Acts chapter 13 and verse 23. From this man's seed, according to the promise, Yahweh raised up from Israel a savior, Yahweh Shah. And John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Which was the cleansing of sins and turning away from your sins and transgressions. This is Romans chapter 6, and I'll start at verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, we believe that we shall also live in him, with him. Knowing that HaMashiach, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to Yahweh. Like, like, likewise, you also, I repeat, likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. Now what does that mean? That simply means you no longer take, take pleasure in the flesh. You no longer take pleasure in the things that everybody else takes pleasure in. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to Yahweh. In Hamashiach, Yahweh said, our Lord, meaning we're living a spiritual life. So everybody talks about being spiritual. Everybody talks about being woke. But they don't do so in a sense that speaks of pleasing the creator of our spirit, pleasing the creator of our soul. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in its life. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin.
sin. But present yourselves to Yahweh as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to Yahweh. And verse 22. But now having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of Yahweh, you have the fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life. In Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Back to Romans chapter 2. Back to Romans chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that we that the judgment of Yahweh is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man? You who judge those practicing such things and do the same, that you will escape the judgment of the Most High? Or do you despite the riches of His goodness? Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, knowing that the goodness of the Most High leads you to repentance? And repentance is turning away from sin. So by people claiming that they love the Lord, by people claiming that they know the Lord, but yet they still do things that say different, that's them being hypocrites. If you truly love the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, you would follow the law, statutes, and commandments. And you would walk in a light that resembles Yahweh Shai. And verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of Yahweh, but the doers of the law will be justified. So if you want the Lord to forgive you of your sins, first you have to do the law, statutes, and commandments and rely on faith. And then you have to persevere and teach others to do so. Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 and verse 1 Brethren my heart's desire and prayer to the most high for Israel is that 
they may be saved. For I bear wit I bear them witness that they have a zeal for Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. So Paul had spoken on the children of Israel having a zeal for the Heavenly Father, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of the Most High. For Hamashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law the man who does those things shall live by them. So during that time, the people weren't able, the people weren't willing to submit. During that time, the people weren't willing to submit to the law, statutes, and commandments to our Lord and Savior, relying on faith. They wanted to establish their own righteousness which takes place in today's day and time a good amount. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Hamashiach down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Hamashiach up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, and your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Yahweh shy, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Yahweh shy, and believe in your heart that Yahweh has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes into righteousness, and with the with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame.
chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. So Paul didn't say, hey, shall I kill? The disciples during that time didn't say they continue. The disciples during that time didn't say, hey, let's continue to sin and, 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 and still say that we love the Lord. No, they said, let us lay, lay aside the sin that so easily ensnares us. So by you loving the Lord, that you following the law, statutes, and commandments, and relying on faith that the Lord is going to bring you through. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Yahweh's side, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. 